Today we're building a React app that monitors and displays live transfer events on the Ethereum blockchain. The finished project is going to look like this, where we have the amount of way transferred, the wallet it's coming from, the wallet it's going to, and the block that it occurred in. Transfers that run through the blockchain are going to appear here in real time. Let's get started. We're using Create React App, so the first thing you'll need to do is create the app. I'm going to call it Event Tracker. Enter that directory. And I'm going to open this up in Atom, but you can use anything you like. I'm going to paste in my package.json with the libraries that I know I need. There's only a few important things you need to know about this file, and I'd recommend copying it. One is to get these libraries, and I recommend using the same versions because you can always run into issues otherwise. And then also adding this .env-e.m.development uh, to the build script. That's going to allow us to access our environment variables inside our code and you don't have to worry about the rest of this file. I'll put the libraries that you'll need in the description. The first thing to do after this is go back to your console and run npmi to install these libraries. Now create a file called .env and in here we're going to put our environment variables. You'll need three. An etherscan API key, an infer a project ID, and the address of the contract. In my case, that's going to be wrapped BTC, but you could use anything. I'm going to paste the contract address in here, and you'll have to get your own Etherscan API key and infer a project ID. Uh, you can get those by going to those sites and signing up. Both are free. And you do need to preface your variable names with react underscore app underscore or you're going to have problems accessing those in the code. Let's get rid of a few of these files here that we don't need like setup test, report web vitals, the logo, app.test and then let's change our app.js to app.jsx and remove the logo from that. Also go into index.js and get rid of report web vitals. First, we'll add our imports, requires, and environment variables. So we're going to need use state and use effect from React. And then we'll require Web3 and Axios. and then we'll load up our environment variables in this file. And we can access these using the syntax process.env.the name of the environment variable. And we're getting this functionality from the .env library. Let's import our other two variables as well. The contract address and the etherscan API key. Now I'm going to remove the logo here and just make sure that this works.
great. The next thing is to create an instance of the Web3 client using our Infer API key. And I'm just going to paste this in here rather than typing it out. So it's the URL for Infura, and then you're going to interpolate your API key at the end. And then we'll put together our Etherscan URL using the contract address and our Etherscan API key. Once again, I'll just copy paste this in here. Next, in our app, we're going to use use state to set up a setter and a getter for the events variable, which is going to be an array of events that we're listening for on Ethereum. And we'll initialize this as an empty array. Next, we'll create a function that makes a request to Etherscan and gets the contract ABI. We'll call this get ABI. Set up a variable called result. And then we'll make a request with Axios. Pass in our either scan URL. And when we get a response, we want to get the result out of that and save it to our result variable. And if there's an error, we want to catch that as well. And we'll just print that to the console. Then we want to parse this into an object and return it. We'll call this function inside another function in our app. Now let's use use effect so that we can execute some code as soon as the app loads up. Inside here we'll wrap our code in uh, another variable called init. And here we'll call the function that we defined above, get ABI. Then we'll create an instance of the contract using that ABI. And once again, the contract address. Then we'll use the events API so that we can subscribe to a specific type of events or all events if you like. So this is our contract instance dot events dot 
I'm going to do transfer, but you could also use all events. And we'll do dot on connected and this just makes it so that when we connect, it will print our subscription ID in the console. This it, is not required, but it's nice to know that we've connected. Then we'll do on data. And this will actually give us access to the events. Let's log these as well. And then we're also going to add these to our events array. And the events returned are a bit of a complex nested object. So we're just going to take a few fields from that uh, and save those to an object. So we'll grab the block number from the event dot block number. And there's another nested object called return values and We'll grab that whole object. Event dot return values. And then if there's an error, let's record that to the console as well. And let's not forget to execute this. Now eventually we'd like to display this in the UI, but for now let's just ensure that we can see this in the console. Let's remove that semicolon. So we can see here our subscription ID. And we'll just have to wait for some events. The reason I'm using wrapped Bitcoin is because it's very popular, so we shouldn't have to wait long before we see some events. But if you were using something lesser known, you could be waiting quite a while. I've removed all the waiting time, but I had to wait a good five minutes for this to appear. But at least we know it's working. So this is what the event object looks like. We're mostly interested in the block number and the return values object here, which has the addresses and the amount of way transferred. Now let's get this actually displaying in the app. Before we make this look a little nicer, let's just get it displaying period. So I'm gonna remove the code that's in here right now. And I'll do events.map. the events in an index. Inside this, I'll create a div. I'll put the amount of way transferred in a H4 tag. And this is nested inside return values value.
And then inside a P tag, we'll print return values from, and then return values to. And in a small tag, let's add the block number as well. And let's check this out in the UI. This is unfortunate because we have to wait for an event to actually happen before we can see anything. So let's go back to our code and just seed a couple events. Rather than initializing events with an empty array, I'm going to initialize it with a variable called seed data, and then we'll just define that here. This would be a little boring for me to type, so I'll just copy paste it in. It's not important that you use the same variables as me. You could really put anything inside these objects as long as the structure is the same. Now, if we go back to our UI, all right, we got some data here. Now let's make this look a little bit nicer. I'm gonna copy and paste some HTML in here and then we'll walk through and I'll explain it. Notice I'm using some bootstrap classes in here like list group and list group item. So we should include bootstrap. We can do that in index.js. So here we're iterating over our events. Here I'm displaying an image and I've just link this to an image of the Bitcoin logo. Here we're displaying the amount of weight transferred. You could convert this to Ether if you'd like, but a lot of these transfers are gonna be super, super small. Though occasionally you'll see some whales move money through. Here we have the, here we have the from address. Here we have the to address. And then down here, we have the block number. And I've just added a little bit of inline styling here. We could definitely make this cleaner, but we're here to learn about blockchain, not CSS. And how does this look in the UI? I'm gonna clear the console here and let's just wait for some events to come through and then we'll see them dynamically added to this list. Here we go, we've got one new event here. And another event. Now I waited another good five minutes before events started coming through here. So don't get discouraged if you don't see events right away. Now where can you go from here? If you're looking for a project, you could take this as a foundation and modify it to track transactions from whales or compare transactions that go from and to different contracts. There's also a lot of interesting DeFi applications you could build by monitoring events. I hope you learned something here. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe.